So I'm Clay Souza. I'm a wedding and portrait photographer in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And every Monday and Wednesday, we come live here to talk about photography at Clay Souza Official. We talk about the three pillars of photography, which are lighting, composition, and posing. Always remember, posing goes hand in hand with directing. If you cannot direct, you cannot pose, and vice versa. Every Monday and Wednesday, we are here to talk about photography. So, if you know somebody who needs to learn about photography, this is the channel for them. So, they refer them to us because we're not only here every Monday and Wednesday, but also posting every single day, multiple times a day, we post something about photography. We also have our YouTube channel with the same name, Clay Souza Official. Everything that goes live in here goes also to our YouTube channel and some a few other videos that I upload to YouTube channel that I don't upload over here. All right. So last week we talked about light modifiers and those videos are already uploaded to our Instagram and also our YouTube. Feel free to go back and, and watch them. And if you watch them on YouTube, where when you're there, give us a like. Subscribe to our channel. Let's get more people in there so we can have a proper URL. We need at least a hundred, a hundred uh, uh, subscribers to be able to 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 have a proper uh, URL and not the YouTube full of letters and numbers. So help us out a little bit here. I would really appreciate. So uh, tonight we're going to talk about something that is very important to photography, but it's really it has nothing to do with cameras, with flash, with lighting, posing, composition, none of that. It's talking about, we're going to talk about taking control over this situation, taking control over your photo shoot to be more successful. And, and why I'm going to talk about this? Why is this so important? Well, I'm watching, you know, I'm in a lot of a lot of groups and I talk to a lot of photographers every single day. And what I'm seeing, I'm watching a lot of people complain about a lot of stuff, complain about clients being delayed, complain about uh, 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 clients who are not dressed, well dressed for the photo shoot, uh, complain about, you know, a lot of stuff, locations that wasn't ideal. Uh, uh, and, and that got me thinking, why are we complaining so much? What's happening? Why are we so... Uh, negative about all of this stuff right and also what got me thinking is what are you doing to control this I, I think what's happening is that people are just letting things happen right so tonight that's why tonight we're going to talk about control how you control the situation without being rigid and without f feeling controller controlling uh, to be more successful. Why? Because if you have a more successful session, you're going to have better images, happier clients, happier clients, and what? Bigger sales. I mean, it's all, all tied together, guys. It's all tied together, all right? So this is what we're going to focus tonight. I'm going to give you different scenarios where uh, uh, how we handle our regular sessions, and regular sessions could be anything from high school senior. It could be... Um, uh, engagement sessions, family shoots, headshots, anything like that. So we're going to give you uh, uh, how we control that. And we're going to also talk about weddings, how we control the wedding day, how we control every part of the wedding. And also um, IPS, how we control the IPS sessions to be successful, right? This is all about managing expectations. And I don't think a lot of you guys are doing what is necessary to get that control uh, and really have a stress-free session because this is what we want to do, right? But before we get there, as I always do every every uh, uh, Monday and Wednesday here in our lives, I go through the questions that I received during the week. I have them written down here, and I pick three questions this time. So one of them is not really a question. is asking, about, can you give us some tips on directing? Well, that's a whole life on itself, right? Uh, but a few things that I can tell you right away is um, be clear on your directions. Be clear, all right? So avoid using right side, left side. And every time you, you give in directions, always use your hands. Move that way. Move this way. Move Because, number one, a lot of people don't know what right and left is. And second of all, 
your right is their left and vice versa so don't don't make it confusing because what happens if you if you're giving a lot of directions and they if they are mixed if you're not if you're not uh, uh, um, clear on your directions frustration is kicking frustration kicks in and then it's all downhill from that the moment the client feels that they can't get it right the moment that they feel like they are dumb or stupid this is it they is it's going to be very hard to warm them up and again a lot of times it's not on the client receiving end it's a lot of time it's the photographer giving directions that are not clear okay so that's one thing that that they can tell you uh, again the, the, uh, directions on uh, uh, tips on directions it could be on directing it could be a whole uh, uh, subject of a life one day okay so the second question is what's the difference between a crop crop camera I'm um, actually no the uh, the question was what is a crop frame camera that's a good question because a lot of people don't know this what happened to to the, to the apparently the sensor is the most expensive part to be made on a camera so what happens is that a full frame camera has a sensor that's 35 millimeter uh, and the crop frame camera has a sensor that's smaller so that sort of was a way that camera manufacturers found to uh, 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 to make cameras that are very capable but cheaper to get into the market so if uh, um, so those cameras they are not bad cameras they're just the sensor is just a little bit smaller what happens to that is that because the sensor is smaller it doesn't capture light as well as a full frame sensor and also you also have the crop factor for instance uh, the the on Canon the crop the crop factor is 1.6 meaning if you're shooting with 100 millimeter lens you actually shooting at 160 millimeter right you have to multiply your uh, uh, um, the, the 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 length of the of the lenses by 1.6 if it's Canon I think Nikon is 1.5 I'm not 100% sure I mean Jeff is my is my Nikon expert in here and Sony who I think uh, Brandon used to shoot Sony or still shoots Sony so uh, uh, the, yeah so Jeff is saying yes yeah, so Nikon is 1.5 you have to multiply by 1.5 and I don't know Sony so if you guys know if you guys Google that for me and just write down here what it is um, but that's what it is so what happens is that the sensor is smaller it's cheaper to make uh, that decrease the camera price that's how they you able to buy really 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 good cameras for a much better price than you used to be, buy before it's because the sensor is smaller but with that you lose a little bit of the, the ability of capturing light uh, and also there's the 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 the, 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 the the crop crops uh, uh, the, the the cropping the, the the crop factor into it all right you have to factor that when you shooting all right uh, and when I say it's it's not able to capture as much light as a full frame it's it, it, it's it's a decent different uh, uh, a decent difference um, if you shoot in a low light, for instance, if you shoot in a church that is very dark and that you cannot use flash, then you probably, if you have a crop sensor, uh, a camera, you're probably going to uh, 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 suffer a little bit. But if you're just doing like, you know, family sessions or or high school seniors or whatever it is a uh, uh, headshot that's not that's uh, you have good light you're perfectly fine with a crop sensor camera you don't need to get a full frame camera because there's not a whole lot of difference there that's going to make your photography goals remember what makes your photography better is not the camera it's about knowledge right it's not the camera that takes the picture you, you you're just pushing the button right you have to learn everything that we teach here on this channel uh, um, so that that's that that it is uh, and this factor into the other the other question also the other the next question would be do I need a full-frame camera and I would say 
only if you're shooting in very low light situations. Like the example that I gave a few minutes ago, uh, if you shoot inside a church that's really, really dark, or if you shoot into a concert where everything's dark, uh, then you're gonna feel you're gonna suffer if you have a crop frame. If you're not shooting in these situations, I don't think. I don't think it's necessary to have a, a full frame camera. Those crop frame cameras, they are really, really capable. Okay, I start shooting with a Canon T2i, which is a crop sensor camera, and then I switch to a Canon 70D, which is a little bit better, but it's still a crop, uh, uh, um, crop sensor camera. Uh, I just move into the, the, the full frame cameras when I start shooting weddings because then I was suffering on low light. So that's that's when we we decide to, sh to, to switch to a full frame camera. All right. So this is it for all three questions. And if you have more questions, just let me know on the DM during the week and I will gladly answer them. All right, let's go through uh, DX cameras are good shooting birds with full frame lenses. Okay, see, there's always some a lot of knowledge here. Yeah, I don't shoot birds much, so I don't know much about shooting birds. I used to, but not now. It have it been like at least five years since since I shot my last bird. <laughs> Great. All right, so let's go back to uh, to the topic that we're going to talk today. Um, it's interesting, I want to talk about this a little bit before I go deep into the topic, because um, if you look at the description of the, the description of my Instagram, you're going to read what, what, what our goal is with this channel, right? why, why we do what we do. And there I wrote, I help, I help photographers to stand out from the rest by using flash without complicated formulas. And guide them to attract their ideal clients. So this is the purpose of this channel. It's all about photography, right? Uh, with focus on flash. But if you guys have been following me for a while since the beginning, or if you've been following uh, uh, for a while now, uh, we talked a lot about flash in the beginning. Uh, and today we talk a whole lot about different stuff. Right? In the beginning we talk about flash and then we introduce composition, then we introduce posing, and now we talk more about business than, than anything else. Um, next year I'm going to do a reset, we're going to go back talking about flash again because there's a lot of beginners people here uh, who joined the channel later and we will have to revisit some topics. But what I want to, to I want what I want you guys to understand is that Photography is a, a people's business. It's really not about the pictures. It is, of course, about the pictures. You have to have a, a good body of work. But we talk a lot here about relationships. We talk about here about control. I'm going to talk today. We talk a lot about IPS. We talk a lot about how to behave, all, all of this type of stuff. Because those things is what makes it's how a part of, of running a business, running a photography business. Because to make a transition from being a a, a, a hobbyist to a business, it's a hard one. It's a lot of it's more of a mind shift than anything else, I believe. Um, once you learn how to shoot, you know how to shoot, right? You will get better. Hopefully, you keep getting better. But once you have a good base, that's what it is. You you, you only improve your shooting, and then you need to work a little bit more on the all the other skills that 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 uh, 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 it's necessary to make a successful business. That's why we strayed away a little bit about from from talking about flash every week because there's so much more. There's so much more to photography than cameras and flashes. Those are, those are the fun things to talk about, right? But honestly, and you have to like people. You have to talk to people. There's no way you're going to have a successful business if you try to run everything online. There's no way if you're going to have a successful business if you don't talk to people. And you, we need to do this. This is, this is what it is. And today, we're going to talk about 
how to gain control over your photo shoots but without being controlling without being rigid without people realizing that you are controlling because let me tell you this every single photo shoot there's going to be something that's going to be weird right it's hardly ever i have a photo shoot that was perfect from beginning to end right it doesn't matter but it's something that's going to fall through and you need to be prepared to deal with that you need to know how to talk to people and but most importantly you need to be able to to predict what can go wrong and control this on your end if if it depends on you you should be able to go in and control it and, and, and already have a plan B or have measures in place to avoid that from happening. And I wrote, like, I took a bunch of notes here um, and I wrote something here. I, I, I split this in three, in three, uh, in three parts. Regular shoot, regular shoot would be anything from engagement session, high school senior, family session, headshots, anything like that. So those are regular shoot. What are the things that you should be doing to control this before, before the session? All right. So to avoid some problems that we see happening over and over and over and people keep complaining about them over and over and over. And the question is, what are you doing to change? Okay, that's one thing. So regular shoot, and I then the second the second uh, piece of this is going to be weddings. How to control different parts of the weddings, uh, and then IPS. If we have time, we do IPS. If you don't, we just go. Uh, we do that next week uh, on Wednesday. I'm sorry, we do that on Wednesday. I keep thinking that today is Wednesday. No, today is two Monday. It's going to be a long week for me. All right. So regular shoot. What what do I hear the most about regular shoot? And if you have, uh, if you have had issues with regular shoot, um, again regular shoot being families, um, high school senior engagement headshots. All right. If you have had issues lately with your regular shoot. Write down here what they are and let's see if I can give you some tips to avoid that from happening again. Just go there and type what they were, oh, this client got late or, or, or whatever it is, right? And let's see if we can do a live here on the spot uh, problem solving because you don't want to have those type of problems. You want this to run smooth. So for your regular sessions, which are the types of, of, of issues that you usually find when you when you shooting or before the photo shoot all right so a few things that we do i will keep talking and you guys just write that in there uh and i will read them and hopefully we're gonna figure out a way to to solve the problems all right so one of the things that i hear a lot is like oh the guy showed up for his engagement session wearing shorts and flip flops and tank top right that's one of the things so outfit is an issue okay so this is on you this is on you and a lot of this I'm going to go back and say this is on you clients don't know what to wear clients have never done this they don't have the obligation to know it is on you to control the outfit to control the wardrobe so how do we do this so we suggest depending on the time of the year we suggest which type of colors they should coordinate together um, we used to have a, 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 a welcome packet that all this information will be printed and sent to them but people are not reading them so we stop doing it um, so what we do we send them an email way before right once they close the session with them we, we, we let them know that we're going to hold their hands throughout the whole thing there's no problem we assure them that uh, <clears throat> we're going to help them because it, honestly people don't know what to do and then we suggest, let's say, if it's fall, we suggest uh, uh, clothing outfits that matches the, the colors of the leaves, that type of thing. And if it's family, we always say, try to, to think about the color palette, right? Don't, don't, I, I, you guys may like it, and if you do, it's fine. But I don't like when people come, like, everybody's wearing jeans and white shirt. I do not like that. 
uh, this was in the past was very popular I do not like that I don't do that so I always try to say hey let's say um, if you're wearing jeans uh, if one person is wearing jeans um, and let's say uh, a green shirt right look for different shades of green um, that type of stuff for everybody to use make the complementary colors and we send them a few samples of colors that they can use we also go to the length of asking them if they have questions about the outfit to lay down all the outfits on the bed take a picture and send to us and then we're gonna talk to them to, to, to guide them how to mix and match I try not to get clients to buy stuff for the sessions but if a lot of times most of the times they get really excited and they end up buying entire stuff right so suggest outfits and if you don't know how to suggest outfit do some research ask me questions I can help you with that all right oh something is happening here um, so another way another thing uh, that we this is this is how we control quote unquote the out outcome of the session without being controlling right time shooting time we try to control that as much as we can we want to shoot although we have lights we can shoot any time of the day we always want to shoot in the gold hour right golden hour right so we control that we control the location where you're going to shoot unless the client says oh there's this beautiful park that I want to shoot in then what happens I go to the place to see it do not ever 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 believe on this thing oh it's so gorgeous so beautiful I had I got burned a few times trusting the clients that's all gorgeous all beautiful and get and I get that there's like really pretty much like nothing like nothing to shoot right so I go to the place and I find unless it's a very very special location let's say uh, maybe it's an engagement session and that is a special location for the couple then yeah I make an exception other than that I suggest the locations we're gonna shoot all right uh, and I'll tell you a lot of times they are glad that we do this because they don't know what to do okay oh a big point here dogs right let's shoot a family we want our dogs if they bring in a dog the only way we shoot with a dog if is if they bring somebody to take care of the dog here's what happens the dog's not gonna be in every single picture no way right so we we take like a bunch of pictures of the dog and then what then they have to keep carrying the dog all over right and the dog uh, uh, um, the dog gets loose and, and this is guys what I'm giving you to you here is issues that happen to us that we learn after it happened to us so we need to do something about this to so nowadays if they had uh, if they're gonna bring a dog we always say you have to have somebody to take care of the dog that's going to be able to take the dog away when we're done with the dog or just take care of the dog because we're not going to be able to to carry the dog all over uh, the photo shoot for an hour, hour and a half there's no way you can do that and this happened to us on, on, on an engagement session where we didn't know better the couple couple brought the dog and it was just a couple and they kept like every time go to one location from to another location untie the dog carry the dog Put the dog over there and then you have to stop to, to 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 the dog needs to drink water and then the dog needs to poop you have to stop right and what happened on that session the dog chew through uh, uh, uh chew through the collar and got lost right i mean just took off right i mean it didn't get lost but it, it got loose and took off and then we have to stop the session to chase the dog around we don't want to do that that's a distraction you want to avoid distraction so nowadays you want to bring your dog fine if you have somebody to bring the dog in at some point let's say we're gonna shoot at two o'clock in the afternoon let's say right so the session is at two o'clock in the afternoon so you're gonna bring the dog at 2 30 we're gonna shoot the dog for 15 20 minutes and then you take the dog away that's it no more walking dogs back uh, 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 um, back and forth all right location talk the location and you control the number of outfits and the number of locations one of the things that I hear the most is like oh so and so want five outfits in three different locations guys that's no sense that is no sense right that, that's crazy five outfits because people just think oh five outfits you have to change 
and some of those outfits it takes a long time to get in and out of them right it this is time that's eating out from your session right you control the number of outfits you control the number of locations that you're going to do okay um one thing that you can do if you want to offer this like multiple like more than two three outfits if you want to i i'm, I'm fine i'm personally fine up to three outfits when you start going four or five i start with no 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 right i start controlling it because there's no way you're going to have a two two hour sessions with like three different locations and five outfits because everybody say oh it's close by you know what but you need to load your gear you need to unload your gear it takes time and you don't want to do that okay so if you want to offer multiple outfits more than two or three you can for an extra charge if you want to right factor that in your price and so that is i'm offering you two outfits if you want more this this much more money for us to do that because it takes time and and make them aware it will be longer because a lot of people think it's not going to be it's not it's not going to be longer it's going to be like oh five outfits and it's going to be one hour no impossible 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 you have to make them aware that it's uh it's um it will take time to load unload car and all that type of stuff this is how you control your session for success without being controlling without them realize that you're controlling all right so this if you have any other situation that you have encountered with clients uh, on a regular shoot and regular shoot being engagement session high school senior family or headshots uh just type in here and let me hear what, what you guys have all right then now you move to weddings where does you have this thing called the timeline uh, uh <clears throat> i'm finding after seven years shooting that timeline is a joke i mean nobody respects the timeline okay and i'll tell you this uh jeff was with me on this last wedding uh, uh that we shot and hair and makeup got late by 45 minutes hair and makeup are my biggest pet peeve in weddings that i will tell you 95 percent of hair and makeup artists they are late and what happens is that they get late and then they finish they go home and the photographer is stuck with a time delay a late timeline until the end of the day we have to play catch up so this last wedding that we shot 45 minute delay from from i think, I think it was 40 minute delay from hair and makeup that's that's incredible upsetting okay and so i was chasing time throughout the rest of the day because the i mean it's it's just it's i i don't even know what to say i really don't even know what to say i used to get really upset about this but it happened so often that today i'm like whatever we will figure something out uh, uh, uh fortunately i learned how to shoot in between moments um i do a lot of portraits in between moments okay let's do family portraits here i'm waiting for so and so to come i grab bride and groom and say all right let's go over here boom 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 take a few shots and go back until so and so is back we can do uh, uh um a lot of uh, uh, uh the family shots like for, if there is a a first look we do the first look and then i shoot a bunch of portraits of them together during the first look so that way i can rec recoup time uh when i'm shooting but when you shoot a wedding and and and, and hair and makeup leaves you 45 minutes late that's just in, like uh, crazy right and then you go back to the planner and say hey hair and makeup is 45 minutes late and she goes like well there's nothing can do about it at the end of the day whose bottom line is going to get hurt whose bottom line is going to get hurt because then if i don't shoot the portrait images bride and groom they're not going to go to the makeup person and say hey you got late my photographer couldn't do my portraits they're not going to get back to the to the uh, uh wedding planner and do that they're going to come back to you and say where are my portraits where are my portraits right so that's why a timeline needs to be um discussed we talk about timelines a lot we talk about timelines what we do we try to control as much as we can but again weddings are a beast on themselves because there's like all different types of vendors and a lot of times we just you know 
relying on other vendors to be on time so they don't hurt our work. Uh, one of the things that, that we do a lot on weddings is um, um, wedding send off, right? And this is and this is this is interesting because we talked about this. I made a post like this week on our on our uh, uh, feed here on Instagram about wedding send off. I post a bunch of pictures and stuff. I, I talk. I try to talk a little bit about controlling, but I didn't have enough room on the post to talk about it. And this is how I run the the wedding send off. Right. Wedding send-offs are probably the most, one of the most stressful times of the wedding, for me at least, because there's this ex expectations of amazing images. But let's, let's break it down, let's think about how a wedding send-off really goes. Um, what can go wrong in a wedding send-off? What can go wrong in a wedding send-off? Right? So, number one, you have if it's a sparkling. Let, let's let's uh, uh, assume that's a sparkle exit. Because most of the weddings are sparkle exits. Okay, so let's assume it's a sparkle exit. So what can go wrong? What can go wrong is you never know how much light the sparkles are going to are, are going to are going to uh, uh, throw out. Right? We don't know how much light the sparkles are going to throw out. So uh, we don't know what the couple is going to do. We don't know what the guests are going to do. Right? That's why you cannot let it run by itself. Do not let the coordinator run the wedding send off. A coordinator is a coordinator. He's not a photographer. And your behind is on the line here. So this is how I do this. I go to the coordinator and say, I got this. Don't worry. I will take care of the whole thing. So take the coordinator out of the equation right from the beginning. Right? And then you get the guest outside. And I'm like, I go to the couple and say, you guys hang out here. Do not exit before I come back and get you. Okay? They say, okay. So I go outside there and I'm running those lines, the two columns here. I'm running the distance. I'm telling them, hey, this is what's going to happen. We're going to fire. You're going to light the sparkles. You guys are going to hold the sparkles on a 45 degrees higher than the couple. Do not get the sparkles close to the couple. Don't be, and I say this, don't be that guy that's going to try to be funny and light the couple on fire because it happens. I've seen this happening before. Okay? Uh, and this is me outside when they're building their lines, right? I'm talking about this. And then I line them up straight. I line one. I go like group by group. They have one line. I go one line and line them straight. And I go to the other line, line them straight. Once they're lined up, if I want to move them closer, I always like having them closer to each other uh, because that creates a much nicer effect of the sparkles on the top of the couple, right? If they are too far away, it doesn't really create that magic uh, uh, that we create when they are close together. And then I go like, I don't, I don't, I just don't go like, now guys, let's move closer together because if, they, if you do this, half of the line is going to move, half of the line is not going to move, then the line is all wavy again, right? It's all messed up again. You have to line up everybody all over again. So what I do, I turn to one side and go, you guys here, pay attention to me, you guys can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right, give him one step this way. One, two, three, one step. Then I go to the other side and do the same thing. You guys can hear me, everybody. I don't, I don't give directions until everybody's paying attention to me. And if they are not, I am sometimes nasty. I go like, hey, guys, come on. Let's pay attention to this. Pay attention to me. Now, once I get everybody paying attention, you guys give him like one step this way. So once I have my lines lined up the way I want, and I tell them, you guys hang in there, don't move, and I go back in and talk to the couple. And this is the conversation I have with the couple. So I go there and say, guys, everybody's out there, everybody's really excited, it's really pumped to send you guys off with a, with a bang, and this is what we're going to do. We are going to go, you guys going to go walk in, you guys going to go and walk in, 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 in on the tunnel, right? And halfway through the, the, the tunnel, you guys are going to stop and give a kiss, okay? And then everybody is going to think that you guys are going to go out. You guys are going to turn around and go back in again, okay? So why do I do this? I do this because, number one, 
the stop and kiss, that's where I'm measuring my light. I measure my light to that spot when I ask them to stop, about halfway through the, uh, 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 through the, through the tunnel, right? So I usually have my lighting assistant, most of the time it's Jeff, or I have Danny, my wife, over there. And if I don't have anybody, I just grab a guest and say, stand here for me, because that's what I think, what I tell the couple, kind of halfway, where I tell the couple where they're going to stop and kiss. So I measure my light to that spot. Now that spot, I know my light is perfect, right? If everything else fails, I have that picture. Got it? So I have that picture there, okay? So, and then I ask them, instead of leaving, keeping uh, walking towards the, the, the camera, I ask them to turn around and go back in. Why do I do that? Because when they're walking back in, I'm looking at my camera and see what I'm getting, if I need to adjust my light. Okay? So, that's the key to make nice uh, 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 send-off images. Oh, that was Siri. Siri is thinking I'm talking to her. Um, some nice uh, 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 send-off images, right? So then, second time, couple, now, if I have to adjust my light, I adjust my light quickly. That's why it's important to know your settings on the camera. Know where your buttons on your camera are. There's no time to be like, oh my God, how do I do this? No, you need to know uh, uh, right off the bat, right? So it needs to move, like the, you need to know your camera as the back of your hand, okay, as the palm of your hand, whatever, whatever you say it. Um, so, and then the second time, couple comes in again, they stop halfway again, give another kiss, and they leave. There's another thing else that happens uh, uh, when I'm doing the send off, but this is the must, this is, this is the bulk of it. So, as you can see, it's like when I say gain control, I mean gain control over the situation, but don't be overbearing. Don't be that guy that photographer is going to be on the top of every single thing, all right? So try to avoid, try to predict what can go wrong and try to, 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 to create communication to your client to make, uh, uh, to avoid those pitfalls because this affects your bottom line. Right? You can't go back to the couple and say, hey, oh, I didn't get your send-off pictures because, uh, the, you know, my lighting wasn't right or, or people were too far away or you guys came in too fast. No, it's your job to control. It's your job. You are the photographer. You are the trusted advisor that they uh, entitle you to take the wedding pictures or any kind of pictures to create the memories and you need to embrace that role. I know it's a pain in the butt. I know it is, but you know what? It's part of their job. I mean, bottom line, that's what it is, guys. It's all about controlling. It's all about communicating and controlling, right? You have that control. You have to, to put your hands on it and you have to jump before everybody. You have to be the first, you have to get there and take control. How many times I walk into a, a, a getting ready room and there's a mess, there's like everything all over the place. I go, oh, come on guys, let's clean it up, let's move this stuff over here, let's leave this, this area here clean, blah, 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 blah. Start talking, start talking with confidence, talk loud with confidence and people will help you. People will help you. All right? So, uh, there's a whole part on IPS here, how to control IPS that we have to be for another day because you're already like, ooh, 8.53, that's a long one. And I never like doing like long, long, long lives like that. I don't like go over 30 minutes so much. Okay, so I hope this was helpful to you. And if you think this was helpful, please hit, hit that heart button there. Let me see how much you liked this or you didn't like it at all. Um, and again, so for next year, we're going to do a reset on this channel and start talking a little bit more about, about lighting and about uh, a composition and, and come on, let me, let me see those hearts coming up. Yep. Yeah. Here they come. All right. Cool. So next year, we're going to go back talking a little bit more about lighting, about composition, about posing, the three pillars, and there's a bunch of new stuff that come up there. All right. Again, guys, thank you so very much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. Like every week, you guys are here with me. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the content that I'm putting out for you guys. Uh, it is a lot of work. So if you have any feedback for me, I would appreciate. Um, if you have ideas of things that I can talk about, 
please don't be shy let me know I'm glad to, to listen to everything and if you have questions let me know all right thank you so very much I hope you guys have a great night and I will see you here again on Wednesday at 8 8 p.m. Eastern time here at Clay Souza official all right bye